Опять по заводу попали. Охренеть. Смотри, что будет. Сейчас ПВО буду. А, давно летит уже. Просто дрон видать, да? Лечит на тебя висит. Ну, дрон не светится вроде. Короче, долетел куда надо. Сейчас дым пойдет. Да. Опять по заводу попали. Охренеть. NATO allies selected Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte as NATO's next boss. As the war in Ukraine rages on its doorstep and uncertainty hangs over the United States' future attitude to the transatlantic alliance. Unopposed, the 57-year-old Rutte will be appointed NATO Secretary General for a four-year term, starting on October 1st. The search for Stoltenberg's successor has been a long and difficult one. In February 2022, After Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine, the Allies had consequently asked Stoltenberg to stay on for one, and then finally two more years, to preside over the reinforcement off the alliance's eastern flank. The war in Ukraine and China's increasing ambitions in international politics will be the two most immediate issues in his entree. In 14 years at the helm of Dutch politics have given Ruta a solid grounding in crisis management, particularly within the EU in which he presented a strong voice. During the Eurozone crisis in the 2010s, he strongly advocated for austerity measures and economic reforms in hard-hit Southern Europe, which gained him a reputation as a, a tough and sometimes hardline negotiator. His pragmatic ability to build and maintain coalitions in such a politically fragmented landscape is often considered as a hallmark of his leadership. The recent attack by the defense forces on the Russian Panzer S-1 air defense system near Belgorod means the failure of the Russian buffer zones strategy, build analyst Julian Ropk said. When the Russian armed forces went on the offensive in the Kharkov region in May, one of the goals was to create buffer zones so that the Ukrainian armed forces could not fire at Belgorod from the border territory. Russia began to advance in two directions, towards Lipsy and towards Volchansk. Both offensives floundered, and a corridor was formed between them, which is still controlled by Ukraine. It was from there that Himars hit the Panzers near Belgorod, the analyst said. As reported, on June 22, powerful explosions thundered near Belgorod. The defense forces hit Russian Panzer S-1 air defense systems with Himars missiles. They were covering the regional center from the south and were located 37 kilometers from the state border. Ropk recalled that the range of Himars reaches 85 kilometers, they could not be on the border itself, but 30 to 40 kilometers to the south. Panzer S-1 is a universal, expensive ground-based air defense system. The complex is designed to protect small objects from air attacks. In addition, It is capable of fighting lightly armored ground targets, as well as enemy personnel. One such air defense system costs about $14 million. 
As of June 12, 2024, the editors of the Oryx blog have found photo or video evidence of Russia's irretrievable loss of 17 Panzer S-1 systems, 15 destroyed and 2 captured.